Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello and welcome to an Inkdependence.com brief video review and water drop test. Today we have this cool ink from Robert Oster. These are uh, inks that are made by this dude named Robert Oster in Australia. And uh, a few months ago I saw uh, somebody on Twitter uh, Ellen Shermind, I believe, uh, had some of these inks. And I was like, wow, those are very cool. And I uh, tweeted that out. And Robert Oster was like, hey, if you want some, I'll send you some. And so he did. And then it got stocked in the Andersons, and they sent me some. So I have, I think, almost all of the Robert Oster inks. I've just found out that are, there are a couple I don't have, and some uh, uh, very kind viewers might actually be sending me some. So that's very cool. Thank you very much for volunteering that kind of stuff. This one, however, is one that I do have. I've got a little bit left. Almost out, actually. This is uh, this is what I have left, actually, the vial. It originally was three mils. Uh, you can find this at Anderson Pens. They sent this out for review, so thank you very much to Anderson Pens and to Robert Oster. Uh, this is the first of these that I reviewed on this channel, and I'm pretty psyched about it. I've just been making a whole bunch of swatches of other Robert Oster inks, and some of them are super cool. I mean, I've got uh, Tranquility here. Look at the like cool reddish sheen in there. Uh, Torque, which is, a, I don't know what that means exactly. I measured some sort of turqu turquoise. Uh, the regular turquoise, which is more green. Uh, Verde de Rio, which is this beautiful green. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm psyched to, to get to review these. And so uh, let me put these aside and not wrinkle them all up. Anyway, this is uh, School Blues, the first one I've really tried. I've got a couple others. I've got like Tomato Red and a few others in pens, but this is one that I've really been enjoying. I've had it in this little pen, which is a Twisby Vac Mini. You see there's a little bit left. This was originally a full fill. I pretty much put this entire, uh, this entire thing in there. I had it in another pen for a little while. I believe it was in this one, uh, but I took it out before I reviewed it. Uh, I forget why. Maybe I think actually it was just because I wanted to try out this other ink. But anyway, it's been in here. This is a medium nib, and it's a, a good medium nib. Seems like it's pretty middle of the road as far as wetness, that sort of jazz. And I have not had it dry up once, which is very cool because I've had it in there since like uh, September. Let's see, no, October 4th was when I actually first put this in there. Going to my ink journal, we'll look at those very soon. But this is a color that I absolutely love. I, I love a good blue, and this is a very, very cool blue. Not a cool blue, I guess it's kind of a dark blue. Anyway, whatever. Uh, it does have a f little bit of um, an issue with uh, you know bleeding and feathering. Some very minor feathering, some minor bleeding. Not a whole lot of either. And actually, if you put it in a smaller nib, probably wouldn't be a problem at all. Here it is on the Staples 20-pound copy paper. And you can see uh, here-ish, there's some uh, some feathering, yeah, a little bit here in the T. It's kind of obvious, but uh, otherwise, not bad. And then on the back, a little bit of uh, a bleed, some you know spotting and stuff like that going on here. So actual bleed, not just show through, but uh, nonetheless, uh, I don't care. I like this ink so much that it can go ahead and it can feather and spread a little bit on this uh, bad paper. I don't really care. It's still looking, mean, even on the bad paper, it looks awesome. It's a very nice blue. It's not going to be mistaken for any blue that you'd find in like a, a rollerball or a gel pen or whatever. It's, uh, it's very much its own thing, and I'm into that. So uh, on this paper, which is of course Rhodia, I love Rhodia paper, uh, you can see a little bit of sheen in here, not a tremendous amount. Uh, but it does have a little bit of it, and then a little bit of shading. You'll see the sheen more on, uh, what did I do with it? Ah, here. This is a, um, it's one of these word cards that you can't get anymore. It used to come in a little ring binder thing like this. Um, I can't say that. Mem, uh, Nemesine is what I'm going to say it says. I'm going to say the M is silent. Nemesine uh, by Mormon. And Mormon makes some really sweet paper. So if you're all looking for some paper that is not particularly expensive, not super hard to get a hold of, and will really hold up to some fountain pen ink, check those out. Um, you can find them in various places. Uh, I think I got these from Jet Pens. I'm almost certain I got all these from Jet Pens. Anyway, there you go. So a lot of sheen on this one, if you can see there. I'm using artificial light again today because it is finally raining in North Carolina. We needed some rain, maybe we'll put out some fires, that would be super. Anyway, very cool sheen, good shading, digging this ink. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. 
That's pretty good. All right, cool. Um, uh, like I say here, it's not the most well-behaved ink, and I also, like I say here, I just don't care. So um, this one is not a, an egregious offender of any kind. It seems to do perfectly well. It just has a little bit of an issue, and I'm okay with that. Uh, here, as far as comparisons and such, let's go in a little bit more. Let me focus. Come on, let's go. All right, cool. Um, I think if I can see. Yeah, that's better. All right, um, it's not like any of the other stuff that I have here on the uh, on the sheet. Um, I didn't have anything that was really like it. I have found a few in the Nemesine cards, uh, which uh, resemble it quite a lot. We'll look at a couple of those here soon. But uh, Noodler Civilization Blue. This is um, I've called it elsewhere a Dallas PD Blue because this is the the ink that they um, they did that benefits the fallen officers in Dallas from that uh, that attack they suffered. Uh, it's a much lighter blue. Um, the Pirate Reserve's American Blue, which is almost always in a pen, has been I think in at least one pen for like the last couple of years. My favorite blue, although this school blue, darn good. Uh, American blue is much darker, more purpley, I guess. Visconti blue, same kind of family as the American blue. And then these, which I thought were going to be kind of blue, just really aren't. Blue black is much more of a, I don't know, blue gray sort of. And Chu Shu is not blue at all. For some reason, before I wrote with this, I was like, oh yeah, it's kind of bluish. No, it's like a gray. Like a, I don't know, not quite purpley gray. Anyway, not close at all. But I do have some others that are close. Let's uh, look at those right quick before we get to the water drop thing, just because... They're here. All right, so that's school blue. Uh, blue eel is actually kind of close. It's a little bit more violety, perhaps. Uh, Souten, much lighter, uh, I think, than than this. Although I've since gotten another uh, sample of Souten, which seems a little bit darker. So I don't know. Maybe they had a bit of a change in the formulation or something like that. Uh, Ackerman number five, which is a a favorite of a lot of people, far more purple than this one, especially in the sheen. You're getting a lot of sheen there from this light. Uh, there you go. Uh, American blue. There it is. It's more, it's more of a, oh, it's got a little bit more violet in it, I think. Uh, there's Robert Oster Blue Sea, which is one that Robert sent me from across the, I was going to say pond, but that's like England. I don't know what you call Australia. A real pond. Uh, Majestic Blue, Diamine Majestic Blue, which is a much more sheeny ink, but uh, very close, I think, actually. The base layers are pretty close colors. Just Majestic Blue has much more sheen. So if you like Majestic Blue, but you don't want nearly as much sheen, but you still want some, uh, go for Oster School Blue. Uh, Visconti Blue, kind of close, more purpley. Uh, Carandash, Idyllic Blue, pretty close. Uh, Robert Oster is, a bit, I believe, a bit uh, more blue than this one. Uh, another Robert Oster ink, Bondi Blue, which I'm really a big fan of. i got to put this in a pen stat, because look at that. It looks like, I don't know, uh, the, it looks like blue water or something. And then uh, Pirate Reserve DC Su Super Show Blue, which is a little bit more purpley again. A lot of things are more purpley than this, it turns out. But anyway, there you go. It's a lot of color comparisons for this video. Hopefully you haven't stopped watching. All right, so let's uh, take a look here. I can just zoom in a little bit using my camera again. All right, so here we go. Let's put some water on the subject. And there we go. All right, that should be plenty of water. That ought to do it. All right, as you can see, oh, my camera's actually hating that. It's like, hey, I can't focus. You've made it all weird. Let's zoom out a little. Oop, that's it. I love it. Maybe that'll help it. Man. Okay, all right, there we go. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and mop that up a bit uh, just because we can. There. One reason I like using Rhodia for these water tests and such is that it's coated, and so the water doesn't just soak the paper and ruin your whole pad of paper, which most other papers would do. I mean, here you get a little bit wrinkly, but the next page, totally dry. So um, that's one reason I really like this Rhodia stuff. It means you get long dry times with a lot of inks. I didn't notice too much of a long dry time with this one. Um, there we go. All right, so a lot of it came up. In fact, most of it. I wouldn't say this has much of any water resistance at all, uh, which is a little bit surprising because here's the chromatography. Go ahead and start that now. Let's just see, it moves, but there's actually quite a lot left uh, down here at the bottom, or at least I thought there was more than uh, before it dried. I uh, definitely have more like a bluish grayish thing going on here, maybe a little bit of like magenta even. Uh, most of the blue has come off and that's what you, saw here as well. So that's not super surprising, I suppose, but that's what you get. All right. So yeah, not much water resistance at all. Um, I think more of it stayed here on the coffee filter than it did here. Yeah. Yeah. 
just a little bit left. So no, not water resistant. Don't use this to go swimming with. All right, put this over here. Also don't address envelopes with it. I know it's envelope addressing season. I gotta do a bunch of that myself for Christmas cards or what have you, but uh, don't use this one. As cool as it looks, it's a bad idea. All right, so here is uh, Robert Osher School Blue. This is a uh, currently inked journal from uh, penhabit.com. You can check those out over there. Matt has those. Uh, they're gonna look different, uh, but I think the paper is the same, which is kind of a, a wheat straw paper of some kind. Wheat straw paper and sugar cane paper are both very good papers for fountain pen inks. Um, they dry much, They dry more quickly, I think, than uh, Rhodia does, but they don't have the um, uh, quite the water resistance. But you can't really see anything through the back, so that's cool. Anyway, there you go. So this is uh, from the Vac Mini. You can see that looks pretty good. And then here, uh, yeah, this is the orange Franklin Kristoff that I had it in. This is an O2, uh, O2. goodness, it's a 20. I gotta be able to read. Uh, and actually, I had it in there for, I don't know, a good month or so, I feel like. Yeah, because I got these in DC, I guess, so early September anyway. And then I think I took it out before I went to Colorado. So that seems about right. I didn't write down the date clean because I don't know, I'm bad at record keeping. But you can see it actually changed a little bit in the pen. It hasn't changed at all on the Vac Mini. I think it must have a better cap seal, at least slightly better cap seal than the Franklin Kristoff did. Uh, but there you go, because this is when it was first put in, and then there's kind of you know, a little bit later, and that's right before I cleaned it, I think. So it got it darkened up a good bit. And that could just be a function of the nib or the cap seal or, I don't know, usage or something like that. But, you know, it darkened up a little bit. And you can see it there next to a bunch of other blues and that sort of jazz. There's some DPD blue. What else have I got in here that's blue? Nothing. Nothing. Zero. All right. Put that aside. And then here, of course, we have an ink journal. You can find these. Uh, I found this at... Um, well, it was actually sent to me by the Ink Journal folks, who I believe uh, work with like Gold Spot and that kind of jazz. And this is Tomoe River. And you see I've got a, another shimmery ink right above that, Golden Sands, lots of glitter. A little bit of that glitter got, got down here. So you see some glitter down here? Don't worry. Robert Oster does not have glitter in his ink. Uh, but <laughs> die mine does, and some of it travels. Glitter, man. Gets on everything. Anyway, uh, there you go. You can see some of that sheen. Get a little bit closer. You know, shift the light a little bit. Yeah, you can see a little bit of it, not too much. But um, here in the mini, you might have to take my word for it, but you can see a little bit of the violet tinge, a little bit of that red sheen that everybody loves, but not too much, just enough, I think. Anyway, this is a great blue. Here's the American blue up here. It's also got a little bit of that red sheen, uh, but uh, this is a great blue. I'm a big fan. It's probably going to be, a, I, don't know, I hope none of, I hope these aren't all as good as this one because frankly, there's like 40 some odd of these Robert Oster inks and that would bankrupt me. So I can't, I can't do that. I hope they're not all that good. But this one is very good. So if you haven't tried this one out yet, if you haven't given Robert Oster a shot, um, I would say get some of these inks. You can find them at your favorite ink purveyors. Uh, for me, that's Anderson Pens. They, present, they sent this out for review, but I would have gotten it from them anyway, probably. Um, so you can check those out. They're not particularly expensive. They come in like 50 mil bottles. They come in some other sizes of bottles, I believe. You can, at uh, Anderson Pens, you can get the uh, three mil samples like a buck 25 or something like that. Uh, so go and check those out for this holiday season. Put this on your wish list. It is rad. Uh, all right, so uh, that's it. I'm Mike. This is inkdependence.com. You can find the blog over at inkdependence.com. It'll have all sorts of pictures of this stuff. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram as at inkdependence. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit subscribe or the bell or uh, I don't know what YouTube's up to now, but hit all the things. Leave me some comments. Uh, you know, do the YouTube stuff. All right, that's it. Peace out.